All right, good morning, everyone. This scope and meeting of the Costa Resilience Advisory Committee is convening by video conference pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 is extended on July 16th, 2022. This meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating remotely via Zoom is posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to share your device and screen. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please silence all phones and devices. Members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate in the discussion. Town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use their full name or who acts inappropriately. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. If you're not able to participate in the remote meeting, you may also submit comments to the Postal Resilience Coordinator, Vince Murphy, to be read into the meeting record. His email is bmurphy at nantucket-ma.gov. I am Mary Longacre, Chair of the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Gary Beller? Here. Sarah Boyce? Here. Peter Brace? Here. Matt Fee? Here. Um, I don't see Rachel Freeman at this point. Um, we know that Ian Golding is unable to attend. Jen Carberg is unable to attend. I don't see Christy Kickham at this point. Uh, Joanna Roach did tell us that she'd be coming in late. Uh, Joe Topham? Yeah. And I'm Mary Longacre. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Vince Murphy? Here. And uh, I'll also recognize Sheila Lucy, the town of Nantucket Harbor Master, who is one of our speakers, but I suppose qualifies under staff as well. I'm here. Um, other speakers for today are um, Stephen Kreese, the general manager of the Great Harbor Yacht Club. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Emily Kilbert, the chair of the Rising Sea Level Committee at the Nantucket Yacht Club. Hi. Thank you. And Carolina Mahina, sustainability manager for New England Development, who are the owners of the Nantucket Boat Basin. Yeah. Good morning, Carolina. Good morning. Okay, finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Um, first item on our agenda is this discussion of coastal resilience planning for the harbor um, with the harbor master Sheila Lucy, Emily Kilbert from the Yacht Club, Stephen Kreese from the General Great Harbor Yacht Club, and Carolina Mahina from the um, yeah, the boat basin. Awesome. First of all, thank you very much uh, to all of our speakers today for joining us. We really appreciate uh, the time on your schedules in August. And uh, the idea was to just have a brief discussion. Um, how is your organization um, seeing the effects of climate change and sea level rise? And what are you preparing to do? Um, and how could those uh, plans be coordinated with the towns? Um, does anybody want to begin? Perhaps the Harbor Master? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, <clears throat> we've seen. Um... We've seen some significant changes. The tides are much different. Um, the tides are extremely low um, here, much lower than they have been right out in front of uh, Washington Street all along that shore. Um, we are working on the town pier. We have permits. We've had a really hard time getting the permits to get it done. The Army Corps was holding us up forever with all the studies that they made us get done. But they finally came through. So we're gonna be replacing the floating docks um, and we're also gonna be extending the dog leg that's at the end of the um, fixed pier to um, that dog leg runs to the Northwest, which will give us a lot of more protection for the fixed pier and the floating docks and extend that out a hundred feet. I believe that that's where the project's gonna start from what I heard the other day speaking to the engineers. Um, and so we're hoping that's going to give us a lot, lot more protection uh, into the future. Um, as far as where we're really seeing it is beach access, obviously. Um, we're in charge of the beach access program for um, public safety to ensure that if there's an accident on any one of our beaches, that we can get um, first responders response down there. 
Um, this year we've lost nine beach access points. Uh, the most significant place where we're seeing it is Madikit, <clears throat> obviously right there at um, Chicago. Um, Tom Nevers, uh, right by the Navy base there, we lost like three or four. The, the, the stuff is way too steep. We can't get ATVs or any help down there safely. Um, the sewer beds, Cisco, um, the, the beach gets so skinny at high tide, it's almost impossible to get an ATV uh, through there. That, that beach has gotten real skinny by the parking lot. Uh, point of breakers towards the nude beach in Maya Comet. That's really, really skinny in there too. And on the North shore, we've seen a significant difference at Dionis. Um, that's much steeper than it has been in the past. Um, pretty much that's what I have, or we have noticed over the, past year uh, um, dealing with all this stuff. Obviously the Madikit one, we were just only open, able to open Madikit to the public um, like three weeks ago, I think was finally we got it to a place where we could put a ramp down safely. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, Gary, you have a question? You're on mute, Gary. Gary, you're on mute. Sorry about that. A question for Sheila. Um, with respect to Madigan Beach, uh, early uh, in the season, I guess in May, when we went over there, when I went over there, uh, my wife, we looked and we were amazed at the loss of beachfront, amazed. And of course, that's when you folks decided to close the beach and uh, we, we all, know what happened over the next several weeks. However, um, your ability to uh, open up the beach again um, is, my question is, is that the result of uh, the normal flow of sand back or did we, was that man-made? Did, did we add to that sand base in order to bring it up high enough so that the, the ramp could be installed or is that just nature giving back to us what it took away from us in the spring? That's my question. And that was, that was all nature. It happens a lot out there. Um, like we monitor it over the year and I usually go get nervous um, about being able to open there, but it always ends up coming back. This year was just really late coming back, but it did. And that's, you know, we just had to wait it out for it to happen. Thank you. Peter? Yeah, uh, Sheila, given how much of the parking lot was lost since last year, it's conceivable that the rest of the parking lot could be gone next year. So I guess people are parking along that road, Macy Road, that runs parallel to Madikit Road. Um, and then I guess somewhat in, in the parking lot as can be allowed, but if you lose a lot more of the parking lot, is that is that kind of mean we we pretty much lose Madikit Beach for the public? I haven't really gotten that far yet, Peter. We're just trying to get through this year, and then we'll take a look at it. But that's a really good question, and I'll definitely keep it on the radar. But yeah, public access is public access, um, and we know we're not going to gain that back. I, and there's no place for us to go back further. Um, so yeah. <laughs> with you that's a real good point but, but i'm not gonna lie i have i was just happy to open it for for a month this year so everybody calmed down a little bit thank you sheila would one of the um marina uh, representatives like to continue sure i'd be happy to oh. <laughs> you we'll go, go first Emily. Stephen. okay Stephen, go ahead <laughs> All right, well, I think um, the most important um, note that I should make on behalf of Great Harbor Yacht Club is that obviously we're continuing to watch the development of what is going on right in front of us. Um, we actually worked with uh, Marty Hilton uh, from the PIN organization a couple of years ago. Um, they mapped all of our property. 
um, and shared that information confidentially with us and that has not been made public. Um, and subsequently, we've hired um, an organization to assist us with a long range planning, um, the McMahon Group. They work with clubs closely. Um, they help us with our survey, um, but more importantly, looking at our campus for future um, out years, particularly now that we've added uh, property to our location in the waterfront uh, location, uh, 96 Washington Street. Um, I live here as a year-round resident, and over the past 12 years that I've been here, I've seen the uh, tides that Sheila noted being quite low and also very high um, during the course of the year. I've seen more flooding come down Washington Street extension to our properties. Fortunately, our properties are currently high enough um, that no property at this point has come close to being flooded. Uh, but we have been surrounded by water on several occasions, uh, more so in the past uh, 18 months or so, and not just in the winter months, I must add. Um, so we're, we're paying attention. Um, I know that we did communicate to Vince um, after a luncheon meeting um, as the um, Nantucket Coastal Resilience Plan was being uh, formulated and made public and um, looking at the uh, slide uh, on page 75, uh, where a breakwater was suggested, uh, we noted that Great Harbor Yacht Club was on the outside of the breakwater. And we did make a suggestion that perhaps we should be included um, in it somehow. We have the only travel lift um, on the island um, that's operated by Finger Boat Works. Um, so it may be prudent uh, to include us in future planning um, with regard to any breakwaters that may be um, suggested or happening for uh, the harbor. Thank you, Stephen. I, I wish that the um, Arcadis consultants had been able to spend more time on the islands, um, but unfortunately, the Coastal Resilience Plan was developed during the height of COVID. So, um, but there's no substitute for putting eyes on and seeing what's actually there on the map. Um, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. Vince? Hey. Um, so I've got that on screen and I can show that page on screen if you wish for page 75, uh, just yeah. for reference. That would be nice. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> everyone can see this okay. And this is the image he, that um, Stephen is referring to here. And it's going to get a bit closer on that so people can see it better. And this is the breakwater concept. Um, and just to quite specifically say that this is mentioned in the later section in section six. Um, where it is specifically called out as um, uh, um, a future concept for that might be needed between 2050 and 2070. So we are some decades away from ever conceiving a proper plan. This was only a potential look into the crystal ball, as it were, for what might be needed uh, into the future if we see the worst types of sea level rise. Thank you, Vince. Um, Emily Kilbert, do you want to go ahead? Sure. I want to apologize in advance. I've got a lot of background noise. Can you all hear me well enough? Yes. Okay. Um, good. Got lawnmowers, construction. <laughs> um, at Nantucket Yacht Club, we have, we tend to, um, if there is a flooding event, it usually comes at us from the street side. Um, the only time that our main clubhouse is flooded was in the storm of 91. Um, and we, I guess more than anything that we've noticed is the issues with the storm drain system as because of our proximity to Steamboat Wharf, um, you know, just all the issues with the water on the roadways. You know, on our property itself, I would say I agree with Stephen. We've noticed, you know, really low and really high tides um, have been really apparent um, in terms of, you know, flooding events this num this summer. Not so much. Um, I mean, is this initial question is just based on what we have known since year. Is that correct? 
Uh, well, it, it's anything that you'd like to communicate to us. Um, okay. So it, you know, how it might um, future operations is certainly interesting. Right. We obviously, um, every repair we do, you know, basic repair, we look at it through the lens of rising sea levels. How can we, you know, do some form of waterproofing so that, you know, every time we do any kind of repair, that's front and foremost on our minds. We have a, um, I lead a committee at the club of about 22 people um, specifically to look at every aspect of our property and plan for the rising sea level. And, you know, not so much erosion for us, but, um, and so we're, we're working. We, we've divided into subcommittees. We've got a lot of expertise. We've got engineers, um, scientists, um, legal builders, all on these committees. So, we're um, taking it very seriously. Um, and then one more thing I'll add is we recently did a formal survey of our membership, um, all different areas of our operations, but one key area that was asked was, you know, look, we just wanted to find out if the members, you know, were worried about sea level rise, were one, wanting to know what we're doing and, the vast majority of the respondents are fully in favor of, you know, working with the town, doing what we can do to um, protect ourselves and be good neighbors. Thank you. Carolina, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Emily, for sharing that, because we this is one of the things that we are thinking about the like the survey and it's very nice that you got these results so i think i would show uh, share most of the things that we are thinking about to do with the committee in another time but i'll just like go briefly through everything and um, so we have uh the hotel close to great point and few properties in the town and the marine and few retail stores in downtown too. So right now we are not getting flood in any of the hotels, but of course we, the New England, it's worried about that. Uh, and where we are getting floods is just in the marine and the retail stores, but the retail stores is mostly through the winter, not summer flood. So we are thinking about prepare the stores since most of them are closed. So we are thinking about waterproof them for the winter. And we have no idea how to do that, but we are studying the possibilities. On, um, so I think it, from the plan for two, 2015, 2017, uh, we, the, our properties that are gonna be impacted is the white elephant in downtown where the waterfall gonna go to. Um, that's where we really wanna work with the town and see if we have a possibility to keep the hotel over there and have the waterfall going somewhere. And um, maybe under the hotel, I don't know if that's a possibility, but we are open to do studies about that. Um, and, uh, the, update, the only update I have from or the last time we talked was we hired a consult to analyze the high ties in the marina. So we probably going to have um, a draft this week on and I can share more later on what are the consult thoughts. Um, yeah, and we are also trying to work for solutions to slow down climate change and see what we can do better in the hotels to be more sustainable. That's it. If anyone have any question. Thank you, Carolina. Um, Vince, are you able to pull up the, um, the page in the Coastal Resilience Plan that addresses the um, downtown neighborhood flood barrier that we have a grant application out for just to get that ready for a minute? Um, and then we'll go ahead and take some questions from the committee members. Peter? Um, yes, my question was for Emily. Um, so 
when the Great Harbor Yacht Club was being built, I was a reporter at the Nan Circuit Independent, and I remember that they, I believe, and Stephen can correct correct me, but I believe that they were required by federal flood insurance um, to put their structure on pilings so as to keep it above the floodplain. And so I'm wondering mm -hmm. if the New York Yacht Club, I'm sorry, the, the Nantucket Yacht Club is similarly built on pilings, or is that something you're considering um, in the near future to get yourselves up? Because I know you guys, what it looks like, you're just one floor, more or less. So maybe it, um, if you had to move upstairs, um, might not be an option. So just wondering about that. Thank you. Right. Um, honestly, I I don't know. The building has been there for some time. Um, we obviously plan to, you know, hire some um, professionals. We don't feel like we're ready to do that quite yet. Um, but, you know, the possibility of raising the clubhouse is certainly in the future and the floodplain keeps going up as we all know, um, but we do have some, um, <clears throat> Carl Jellamy is, is on my committee who runs Tuscana. This is what he does. So he's one of the experts that we're listening to. We feel like the first thing that we will probably be facing is the waterfront bulkhead um, because we know the steamship is planning to raise or rebuild their bulkhead in around five to 10 years. So that's sort of what we're focusing on first, but we're gonna look at all options in terms of what you said regarding the pilings. It's really not my particular area of expertise, unfortunately, to answer you fully. Thank you, Emily. Stephen? Um, just to respond to Peter, yes, we are on pilings at this location. Um, when PIN, um, Marty Hilton and his team did the uh, did the mapping. Um, it's inevitable that we may need to go higher at some point in numerous decades down the road. Um, Thank you, Stephen. Other questions from committee members? Vince, would you um, talk briefly about the grant application that the town has submitted? Uh, this is not an award. This is a, an application at this stage. Uh, yep. so just to make sure that the uh, marina representatives have a, are familiar with it and have a chance to ask questions as well. Sure thing. Uh, thanks, Mary. So um, what, there was uh, one of the key cornerstone um, ideas in the coastal resilience plan is that what's called the downtown flood barrier uh, it's a system that runs uh, through the downtown area primarily on raised roads but also through some other areas uh, most notably um, uh, pretty close to what Emily was talking about there uh, going right by uh, the Nantucket, Nantucket Yacht Club um, bulkhead there that black line I'm just going to get a lot closer in right there uh, at the, if everyone can see that on screen, that black line. And it has other things in it as well, such as um, uh, dune systems and um, other potential future road raisings uh, in later phases. Um, what we're This is the kind of overarching project. What we're looking at and what was the subject of the grant application was the phase one area. This focuses on Easy Street Basin and the surrounding area. Um, such as uh, the bottom of Broad Street and such. So what we are looking for is a, a, an engineering feasibility study. It's just paperwork at this point to understand the handful of things. The grant application went in in uh, the first week of June. We'll find out in August. Uh, they just say in the month of August, they don't say when in August, um, if we have been successful with this coastal zone management grant, it's a CZM grant from the Office of Coastal Zone Management. And the idea would be to focus on the Easy Street Basin, uh, find out what's acceptable to the community, what's acceptable to local business, what exact level we would need to raise the uh, any structure where be the street or a bulkhead or whatever uh, up to. Um, and then how that will affect neighbors and uh, what benefit it will provide. And then this will culminate in uh, a 
uh, draft design that would be something in the order of 30 to 50 percent so that we could then move forward with a grant application for construction so it's just the phase one so that we could understand exactly what was needed in a design to move forward mm -hmm. for another grant application for um, putting it in place at a later phase the idea then is that this is the foothold this is where we start where we already have most problems in the easy street basin where it floods most and then expand north and south in later phases uh, to take in much of the area you see here, not necessarily in the way it's laid out here, but um, in a way that would be more acceptable to the community. And this is what we need to find out. We need, if we're using this uh, base principle concept design to build from, and that is where we are now, uh, having our first grant application in for this. Thank you, Vince. Uh, so one of the things that, uh, you know, one of the reasons I, I asked uh, the speakers today, I mean, all of these plans are pieces, and it's going to be helpful to all of us if we have an idea of uh, what we're targeting, um, you know, what, what height for buildings or for barriers. Uh, the, the fact that I think both Stephen and Emily alluded to, that the water flows around a barrier. Uh, so it, it's nice to be higher, but that doesn't mean the water isn't going to affect you. Uh, you may end up being an island, as Stephen said. You may end up with water coming from the street rather than from the uh, harbor. Uh, you know, the, the water finds a way. So a unified approach is the only way to keep the water out. Um, or uh, to learn how to figure out, uh, as Carolina was suggesting, you know, how to deal with the water where you are. So I appreciate that all of you are here today for this very early stage conversation, and I hope that we will be able to continue them. Uh, any questions, uh, particularly from the representatives, about the uh, grant application that the town has in? No, but I do have a question. Stephen, go ahead. Sure. Um, we have numerous storm drains on our property, and. Um, Annually, we have them cleaned. Um, the last cleaning took place in 2021 um, when I reached out to the company, which is an off-island company, because uh, about 10 years ago, the on-island company that I used to work with uh, went out of business or they retired. So I found an off-island company. Uh, when I reached out to them to have the storm drains cleaned this year, they informed me that the business had been sold and the company that had purchased the business was no longer servicing Nantucket. I've done research, I've spoken with Jeff Carlson, our natural resource director, um, and at this point, um, I'm unable to identify um, anybody to clean my storm drains. So I'm asking if anybody in this group, um, Vince, um, has any leads um, on an on-island company or an off-island company that a Great Harbor Yacht Club could reach out to so we can continue to maintain our storm drains, which are very important obviously in uh, stormwater drainage, et cetera, et cetera. Vince, do you have any insights? Um, so just, I'm sure Stephen already knows this, but just to say it out loud, uh, Jeff Carlson is my supervisor and I, I will see if he has any further leads and press it that way and see if I can get an update for you. Oh. Um, I don't know what, uh, I, I've, I know one or two companies in Ireland that have, mm. uh, I don't know, work with the DPW for the sake of argument. So let me see what I can dig up for you and pass along that information. And I, there are other um, areas on the island that, you know, are required or need to have their storm drains cleaned as well that I'm in touch with. Um, and to this point, I haven't been informed of any company that can service. So any help from anywhere would be greatly appreciated. Understood. We'll get on it. Thank you. Stephen, I, I live in a neighborhood that has that same issue, and we have not found anything either. Which is which is a real problem. Um, yeah. It's a great business for somebody to start, even if they were financed. I know the trucks are very expensive. I know that the town has trucks, but I know the town, because of COVID and manpower, are behind in cleaning storm drains themselves. So anyway, just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. It's important that we stay on top of our storm drains. Yeah, I know that NIR has to do the uh, stop and shop one every year as well. Um, they have like oil filters, et cetera, in there that they need to clean. So yeah, it's gonna be problematic if you guys can't find someone. Yeah, I have about 20 plus or minus that I need to clean. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jim. Uh, Carolina, do you have anything to add on that subject with stormwater and uh, drain cleaning? No, I I'm, I don't know, but I can ask. And if we are using someone, I can share with you, Stephen. Thank you very much. And Could I ask a... Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Emily. If, if we're done, are, are we still talking about the storm drain? Because I have a different question before we move on. Uh, I'll, I'll add that the town is working on a stormwater management plan. And I don't know um, to what extent the schedule for cleaning storm drains will be included in that, but I certainly hope that that will be part of it. Emily, go ahead. I was just wondering um, if this committee or the select board have considered any collaboration with the vineyard or the Cape as we're all facing these issues with, you know, grants, planning, you know, the whole gamut. Uh, Vince, aren't, aren't, isn't the town, uh, aren't Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard working together on a grant for something? And I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's housing, but I don't remember. Uh, we did on a different grant, on a supply chain resilience grant. Um, that's the one I was involved in. I don't know about housing. I don't, that's not my forte. That's not what I work on. Yeah. but. Um, last year 2021 um uh, late winter into the spring we looked at it um we tried to put a grant application together um it we got quite far in the process ultimately the grant application didn't go in because we missed a deadline uh, as far as i remember and we were looking at redoing it um and rewriting sections of it to uh well basically catch up in the meantime and that's one of the things we have worked on um, I know that I don't mean to put Matt Fee on the spot, but there's been quite a bit of conversation about uh, mutual aid type agreements and Nantucket being the island that we are um, has issues on that, well, on that front as well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing problem. I'm aware of, of some conversations in different areas, and as I mentioned, housing, uh, solid waste, so uh, between the vineyard and, and Nantucket, um, so there is there are communication channels, um, but it's it's different. Their situation is is very differently situated than ours. Um, the distance from the mainland and the population, and the fact that they have six towns to our one, it it just makes negotiating more interesting. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't know if you know there was, as I said, any kind of collaboration with addressing rising seas. Um, there has been conversations around it with uh, Martha's Vineyard Commission, not any of the individual towns. That's kind of the conglomerate that brings all the towns together. That's who we've been mainly discussing these things with, um, mostly through the, um, the um, what did I just call it? The, um, the sustainability. Um, sustainability, yeah, it's the, it's the, um, it's the resilience of making sure that our infrastructure infrastructure resilience. Thank you. Sarah, did you have your hand up? Yes, I had a question. Gary, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm writing that, Sarah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I, I mean, I don't know if this answers your question, Emily, but I think we do a lot of learning from other communities. And so we're sharing information in that way um, about reading if there's other towns that have different plans that have used other consultants um, like Falmouth comes to mind we looked at some of their plans um, we've learned like when we so I don't know if that helps answer your question there is sharing of information and not even just within um, Massachusetts but we've as a committee we've heard from experts from that have you know maybe been further along in their planning from other communities um, so there's that sharing of information and I don't know mm -hmm. I would be interested to hear from Stephen and Emily if there's, um, I don't know if there's like a trade group or a group of yacht clubs that kind of communicates and what other communities are doing in your industry as well, because that might be, you know, um, that might be interesting as well to, to see with your particular needs and interests and locations, et cetera. Yes, we have um, tracked a number of years back, the Edgar Town Yacht Club raised their clubhouse. Um, so we're pretty familiar with that project. I'm sure you are as well, Stephen. Um, but yeah, I mean, we are similar 
we have a speaker series at the club and a, a number of our speakers have been focused on education in this area, whether it's, you know, all different areas of sustainability, um, you know, the land council and then some off island people and the members um, seem to just fl flock to these events whenever it's about rising sea levels. Um, and we are also exploring a collaboration with the Historical Association in some educational programming there. Um, we even have our kids at the club, you know, going to various um, field trips to do with sustainability. So, you know, it's, I think we're all on it. Thank you, Emily. We'll go to Rachel and then Gary. Rachel, yeah, you're Thank on. You. Oh. Thank you, Mary. Um, I just wanted to add that um, at the land bank in our project planning, we work with a lot of different um, municipalities and primarily uh, we're modeling, we've done a ton with um, the group that put together Climate Ready Boston. And we have worked a lot with um, people who are working in New York City. So that is, are the two communities that we're really focusing in on right now, um, knowing that we have similarities in islands with Vineyard and we have been discussing, you know, things with them, but those are probably the two groups that were, or the two areas that we're pulling from in our planning processes right now. So thank you. And uh, Jen Carberg isn't here today, but I know that the Nantucket Conservation Foundation is working with the trustees of reservations. Um, and of course the trustees have properties on the vineyard in elsewhere in Massachusetts. So there is that um, collaboration as well. Gary? This is a little different subject, um, but I wonder if either Sheila or members of some of the, the local yacht clubs downtown uh, have, a, have an answer for me. Uh, at last week's uh, select board, I think it was last week's select board, uh, David uh, Gray, the head of the uh, people in charge of the sewer system, uh, talked about uh, a number of complaints, people on Eastern Street that uh, said that the um, there seems to be uh, some serious uh, odors arising from the conservation land, they thought, and they figured it's a problem with the sewer system. And interestingly, David said that it wasn't, they looked into it and it had nothing to do with the source system. They said it's an unusual uh, problem with seaweed and the seaweed is apparently backed up. And I don't know whether or not that seaweed is interfering with the storm drains downtown or not. Um, at, at a recent meeting, uh, Steve Axel, the head of the DPW, I, was a, a guest and I asked him about it and he had no idea of the subject at all. So has anyone else heard about what David Gray talked about? Some problem with seaweed down in the harbor there that is blocking some of the storm drains? Yeah, Peter? I... Oh, sorry, Sheila, go ahead and then we'll go to Peter. Um, yeah, we, we've heard about it. We've, we have the problem here on all the time with uh, eel brass blocking the storm drains. We have to go out every time we have an easterly blow. We have to go out and um, clean those all the time. Um, I also know that there was a problem like there it's I think the smell came because it was all washed up on the uh, West Jetty and along that beach along Holbert Ave there um, and it went down. But that's just because we had such strong winds, I think, and everything just landed up there. Um, so, yeah, that it is a common problem. We have to, like I say, we, we have to shovel out the storm drain out in front of the building and we do a couple more just to keep uh, the eelgrass out of there. Thank you, Sheila. Go to Peter. Yeah, I don't know if this is related at all, but um, I thought that when Gary said that, that maybe the marsh that is on the north side of Easton Street along where the boats park the trailers, the boat owners park the trailers, uh, but maybe that could be drying out, maybe causing the smell. Originally, that marsh was connected to the it was connected to the harbor through an opening there by the breakers. So just a thought. Thank you, Peter. 
yeah that's that that's that's the issue we've had before peter was you know we've had complaints people complaining it's sewer and it was actually that marsh was just you know acting up didn't smell too good and then we went and dave would go down there a bunch and there's nothing to be you know clean nothing to do it's the marsh thank you matt uh, other thoughts on coaster resilience in the harbor If there are no further comments, we can go on to the next agenda item. And again, thank you to the representatives that appeared today. Uh, we really appreciate their cooperation and participation in the discussion and certainly hope to continue those. And uh, Vince, I'm sure, would be able to answer any questions about what the town is doing with its uh, efforts as well. Next item on the agenda is a discussion of a proclamation of September as Climate Change Awareness Month and associated activities. Uh, we have two representatives from Acclimate who are also here. Uh, I apologize, perhaps I should have recognized them at the beginning of the meeting as potential speakers. Uh, we have Will Kinsella. Uh, Will, you wanna say hello? Hello. <laughs> and Izzy Ga is also here from Acclimate. Uh, so for the committee, Vince, can you put last year's proclamation up on the screen? And my hope is that today we can uh, perhaps make a few edits and submit this to the select board again for 2022. Um, so uh, obviously we'd, we'd update any date references. Uh, the, uh, there's a bullet point about the coastal resilience plan that we would change to say that the plan has been adopted uh, rather than it is underway. Um, are there other things that uh, people would want to include in a proclamation for this September? We had one minor point, Mary, if we could change the email address for Acclimate from yes. the uh, info at Acclimate. Mm -hmm. And um, also the, we have a website address there with an events page. If you have a more up-to-date reference, uh, we'd be happy to swap that in as well. That's great. If we could send that to Vince, if that's all yep. right. Yep. Uh, we had last year, this is the third year that we have partnered with this proclamation. And I believe we discussed the uh, the likelihood of getting uh, any sort of language change past select board might uh, slow down the process. So um we uh we have a focus this year on the changing oceans such as the fertilization the acidification and microplastics that that we're focusing on as a group but um had, had are, are comfortable with the proclamation as it stands um and it, it's it's what we've done in the past and moving forward if we if we keep the proclamation simple it might just ease the passage of it through the select board um, with the exception of the date and uh, those small email changes. Uh, comments we're partnering with the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee, so it's it's certainly um, we're we're willing to work with you on any proposed changes that you all see fit. Comments from committee members. Uh, not seeing any. Does anybody want to make a motion, uh, Vince? Uh, question first. A uh, simple question for the committee and for Will, notwithstanding changing the proclamation here, leave that as is and update it. Would you want to cover some of your ocean acidification and this year's key focus for Acclimate as a bullet point here? And just call it out as this year's key focus from Acclimate. Uh, I, I, I like Will's earlier suggestion about uh, maintaining the format. I think that that is the best approach. Uh, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Mary. We're again, we're we're happy to to do with whatever you you see fit. But um, as we discussed it last year, our last year's efforts were focused on uh, more uh, historic resilience, and we we decided to exclude any mention of that in a bullet point just for ease of passage through the select board. So would anyone like to make a motion to uh, have yes, been? I'll move that we. <laughs> Go ahead, Barry. The... I'll move that we use the uh, format we used last year, 
but just update it to change it to 2022 and the fact that our plan is now complete and um, in the works. Thank you, Gary. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Sarah. Any further discussion? If not, we'll go to a roll call vote. Gary Beller? Hey. Sarah Boyce? Aye. Peter Brace? Aye. Matt Fee? Aye. Rachel Freeman? Aye. Uh, Joe, are you still with us? Not hearing from Joe and Mary Longacre, aye. So that passes. Thank you all. Um, Vince will work on the edits for that and send that off to the select board. Uh, quick thank side note, Will. Um, thank you, uh, Will and Izzy, for joining us today. Thanks uh, for having us. Have you heard from the select board about our second quarter report being scheduled, Vince? No, I have not. Um, by the way, I just uh, to let everyone know, um, I did send it to the select board and you have to do a cover sheet that goes with it. Um, all done, all submitted. Thank you, Vince. Um, next item on our agenda is nomination and election of a secretary for the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee. Uh, we'll start with a, a hopeful note. Do we have any volunteers or nominations for a secretary? If there are none, then the question becomes, how can we uh, make this a job that somebody can volunteer to do? Uh, there are a couple of options that I came up with. Peter, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to say that, um, you know, anyone who's read my minutes, they're quite extensive, and that's just simply because I'm a reporter, and that's, and that's how they come out. And then if you go back and you look at Fritz's uh, minutes there, they're bare bones, um, and and the way he did them is just fine. As long as you get the decisions, it doesn't have to be a big, big long process. Um, I just think that we're a regulatory, we're not a regulatory board, so we don't have staff to do the minutes. We can't put that on anybody. It has to be one of us. So I know we're all busy. Um, we have our own versions of busy. Some of us have families and three jobs. Some of us, some of us have three jobs, and whatever. But um, just thinks it thinks it's important that we share the load. That's all. Thank you, Peter. Uh, so some of the options um, that occurred to me, uh, we could have co-secretaries, uh, two people who volunteer to divide the responsibility, uh, or even three. Uh, we could have rotating secretaries. So one person volunteers for at least a month or two at a time, um, and then somebody else takes over. Uh, we could reduce the frequency of the meetings to once a month, which would um, theoretically give somebody the other couple of hours in the month to do the minutes. Um, you know, th those are some options that, you know, if, if we need to fill this requirement. Um, you know, if that helps us do that, then those are things we should consider. Sarah? Um, I would be okay doing it for a short time. Um, and, you know, sharing the load is fine too. I just uh, also agree with Pete that it's it's necessary. And so I know that like we're all busy, but um, I also don't want to get roped into doing it for the rest of my term. Um, I think there are others that can definitely share the load, some of whom aren't on the call today. So. Um, I think it's important to have that conversation when the full group is here too. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Peter and then Rachel. Yeah, um, you know, I've served on the Harvard Shelfish Advisory Board for I think nine years now. And we elect officers every year. So it shouldn't be your whole term that you're being secretary. It should be one year and somebody gives it up. You know, I filled in for, for Fritz. Um, when he when he left, um, I've told Vince that I would do the minutes for this meeting, um, but uh, it, sh it shouldn't be the whole, it shouldn't be your whole term. And also, um, I, I disagree with Mary's suggestion that we rearrange our meeting schedule just so we can accommodate our secretary. You know, that if you do that, then, then we're going to have longer meetings and not accomplish what we need to accomplish. We may need to have more meetings anyway. 
And if we do once once a month meetings, then that means who's ever secretary is going to spend a longer time doing the minutes anyway. So it, it's been my experience being the interim secretary that the meetings are usually two hours long, but sometimes they're shorter. And again, you don't have to do them as detail oriented as I do. The, the Robert's Rules of Order says the minutes have to be a sense of the meeting. That's it. You got to get the votes. You got to get who, who's there, staff, board members, when people come in, when they leave, stuff like that. The decisions made and the documents that are available. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to be a stenographer to do it. It's not every single word. Anyway. Thank you, Peter. Rachel? Thank you, Mary. Uh, I would be willing to be some form of co-secretary or share it with someone. Um, I am reluctant to take it on entirely myself for any number of reasons. Um, and then I would add, I, you know, I'm relatively new to this committee, so I don't feel like I really uh, should have any say in what an effective meeting schedule is. Um, but, you know, just off the top of my head, um, you know, condensing meetings is never a bad thing in my world, but that doesn't mean that the format that crack is in now is really how it should run. Like I said, I have like two meetings really to as a example for me to say that. So I would be open-minded to one meeting a month, but I'm not sure that that's the right answer for this committee. So, but I am willing to share secretary duties with someone. Thank you, Rachel. And you know, I'll clarify, reducing the meeting frequency is not an ideal option. Um, it's, it's more of a desperate Hail Mary, if you will. Um, Sarah? Yeah, so I'm um, happy to do it. And then as knowing that Rachel is a backup too, or you know, we can communicate if I can't go to a meeting or something, I think that's really helpful knowing that. Because I felt you know, we're worried about committing to it when sometimes, um, you know, you have to come late or leave early or something. So knowing that there's there's also backup is helpful. All right, so it sounds, uh, Peter, go ahead and then Gary. Um, yeah, you don't necessarily, you just, you gotta be present to collect the relevant data that I just mentioned who's here and votes and whatever, but, um, most of that you can get by watching the video on YouTube. Um, what's important about being here, being here for the meeting for the minutes is that the view that you're looking at, the gallery view shows everybody that's at the meeting. But when you watch the YouTube video, that that is not shown. So you have to try and guess who is who. So it's important that whoever is gonna do the minutes um, let's say Sarah and Rachel decide to be co-secretaries, but Sarah's gonna come, come in late and Rachel's gonna be there at the beginning and Rachel can get all the names of the people who are in attendance at the meeting and then pass them to Sarah or something like that, just to make it easier. So actually we do have a participant record from Zoom. So we've okay. been happy to share that for the end. Okay, I've never seen that, but that's fine. Uh, and I think Gary was next. I don't really have the time to do the whole thing, but um, if somebody else was doing the initial draft, I wouldn't mind um, uh, helping uh, consolidate what people put down initially. I, my own view is that uh, the minutes of these meetings should never be more than two pages. Um, I think Fritz, Fritz uh, did a pretty good job of consolidating, and, and I would be glad to help do that, but I don't even have the con computer skills to even put the first draft together. So, and at my age, I'm not going to become a computer expert on that. So, but if someone wants to do those first drafts and wants to get some input from me, I'll be glad to participate in that way. Thank you, Gary. So, uh, Rachel and Sarah, would you like to nominate yourselves as co-secretaries? Uh, for a term not to exceed June of 2023, or whatever length you agree to. So moved. <laughs> so nominated, I guess. Second. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so in a roll call vote to uh, designate Rachel Freeman and Sarah Boyce as co-secretaries, uh, Gary Beller. Aye. Sarah Boyce. Aye. Peter Brace. Aye. Matt Fee. Aye. Rachel Freeman. There's this rumor that you can hit the space button and it, <laughs> it unmutes you, right? It's not working for me. Um, aye. Thank you. Joe Topham. Aye. And Mary Longacre, aye with profound thank yous. So uh, Peter said uh, he is doing the minutes for this meeting. So Rachel and Sarah coordinate um, your responsibilities for the next one. And thank you again. Um, we have public comment next on the agenda. Are there any members of the public who wish to offer a comment at this time? You can use the raise hand feature in Zoom, uh, or you can unmute and let us know of your attention. Mary, it's Deanne. Hi, Deanne Etherton, go ahead. Hi, uh, just a few comments. Um, in regard to the public access at Natiket and to any of other, our other South Shore beaches, I looked back in my files and Dave Franzuto had secured CZM grants in 2016 to be proactive and ensure public access at Matiket at uh, the end of Hummock Pond Road and also the public access in Quays. So it just seems to me that since public access is such a key component of our coastal resilience plan, that we need to look ahead, that while the, um, the steepness of the bank may be greater this year, it's been an ongoing problem, that um, hopefully the, the proper people within our town administration can um, keep an eye on. Uh, oh, thank you, Dan. Uh, Vince? Uh, hi, Dan. You named hi, three Vince. locations. Hi, Dan. Uh, you named three locations. I've missed one of them. Uh, audio just fell out for a second. I have Madikit, I have Quays. And what was the third one? Uh, was it the end of Hummock Pond Road, Vince? And I, we have photos in the Coastal Conservancy files of all those projects. And I Ooh. would be happy to send them to you. And I think at the same time, Dave also and and the powers that be within the team within the town um, committed to the concept of a sandbank, because at that point, Popus Harbor was being dredged. And the idea is that we would save those spoils to use, especially at those public access points. Um, I know the sand bank was depleted a couple of years ago, but that there is a dredging plan in place. So, so hopefully, you know, all of those good strategies that took a lot of time and energy to develop can be continued because the problems and the challenges are the same. Okay, just, just one other comment, Mary, which also has to do with public access um, within the harbor. As you know, public access to the water is one of the key priorities of the Coastal Resilience Plan. And um, those entities that have um, facilities on the harbor are also bound by Chapter 91 and public access. So I, I, had, I had hoped to be able to raise that with them with both the Nantucket Yacht Club and the Great Harbor Yacht Club does have public access um, in front of it. As you know, they're all public, a number of public access signs there. My understanding is that the Nantucket Yacht Club had reached an agreement with the town in terms of providing public access in front of its clubhouse to kind of go on a holding pattern for a some certain number of years but I think that that agreement has probably come to an end. So public access along the harbor is just a key component of who we are. And Rachel, I know the land bank has been such a, a big player in that. So I would just hope that we could all keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Deanne. Matt? Yeah, no, Deanne, I, I don't, you, did you watch our last meeting? 
because uh, a lot of this was discussed and uh, Ian is bringing a lot of this up with in regards to bulkheads and that type of issue. And, and we're, I think in a future meeting, we're going to be, be discussing that aspect of it. Uh, answering the yacht, the yacht club, what always ha comes up when this is discussed at the board level that I've seen over the years, the issue becomes safety at the steamship authority. And how do you get people, you know, across the truck lanes and across the car lanes? I think that, you know, in order to have uh, public access there, it has to be safe. And so, you know, that hasn't been sorted out. I, you know, and I'm sure the, the Yacht Club would rather not have it as well. So, you know, so the, there are issues still to be worked out. The steamship would have to make sure that they've set it up so it's safe. So. Thank you, Matt. Uh, any other public comment at this time? If there is none, um, next item. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped the approval of the minutes. My apologies um, for taking those out of order. Move approval. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Um, Vince, did you have any comments to present to the committee? I, I did send Vince some quick edits for typos. Uh, Gary, do you have a I was going to second. That's all. Yeah, that's our part. I jumped in front of you again. So I'm I'm all kerfuffled today. <laughs> all right. So we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes. Any further discussion? If there is none. We'll do a roll call vote. Gary Beller. Aye. Sarah Boyce. Aye. Peter Brace. Aye. Matt Fee. Aye. Rachel Freeman. Aye. Uh, Joe Topham. Aye. And Mary Long Acre, aye. Thank you all. <clears throat> okay. Uh, new Business Committee and Natural Resources Department reports. Uh, Vince had a, an update for us on the uh, Harbor Management Plan. Yeah, it's uh, just a very minor update. I um, want to just find out where Coast Resilience stands in this and how the plan is progressing. The plan seems to be underway. Um, I'm working on finding out more um, about how the CRP is included. It is a mission of uh, the Harbour Plan to include resilience, so that's positive. But what I'll need to find now is where the committee um, inclusion might be. Thank you, Vince. Anything else from the Natural Resources Department? Um, uh, no, uh, nothing significant. Um, I'm just trying, uh, waiting uh, on the results. Uh, it, whatever information might come back from CZM, and as soon as I get it, um, I'll just be letting the committee know as soon as I get it. Thanks, Vince. Fingers crossed. Um, I, I did see an article featuring Jen Carberg in today's Nantucket magazine. Uh, that's available online from the Inquirer and Mirror. Uh, so that was a nice mention of post resilience. Other committee reports? Sarah? Um, I know I'm not representing a committee, but I just thought I'd share some um, new project information. So I, some of you might know we got, a, a, Linda Loring, we got a um, grant from the Madigan Conservation Association to help with our work on Long Pond. And one of the things as it relates to this committee is we've been installed tide um, water level meters um, in the north head of Long Pond, in the main body of Long Pond, and also in Madigan Ditch to get a better, under, among other things, to get a better understanding of the actual tide flow in and out of that area. And so I just thought I'd mention it as a piece of information that we're collecting for our benefit as we do our um, coast, or we don't have coastal, but our sea level rise plan for the property, um, but for the Linda Loring property, but we want to share that in, um, data with the town as well as it relates to. Um, Long Pond and the flooding of Madigan Road potentially and, and Madigan Ditch. So just, we just installed them about a month ago and we've had, you know, been kind of checking on them and adjusting and fighting off the snapping turtles. So um, it's, uh, as results come, we'll share them. I just wanted to, to let you know that that was happening. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Rachel, we had talked previously about you giving an update on the land banks plans. Um, is that still uh, on the, the table for our next meeting at the end of August? Yes. Um, actually, this is short notice, um, but we have, and I actually haven't been involved in it, so I don't really know. The draft just came into my inbox. 
I know that um, we have a presentation by Skate tonight on our agenda for the land bank meeting at four. Um, I would have to review the presentation that I was just sent in order to tell you exactly what it was about, um, but we are working on planning with them for everywhere from um, Washington Street over through Konsu Springs uh, down to East Creek Road. So I'm not exactly sure what they're planning to cover in there, um, but that is actually on for tonight. And after that happens, I'm happy to provide an update, you know, a similar presentation um, to the committee. So. And Rich, I think that's the four o'clock meeting that's on the town's calendar. Is that what you're referring to? It is. And uh, it is in person, actually. It's in person, not by yeah. a Zoom. Yes, we have run hybrids if somebody is not in attendance, but I don't know that we're running it as a hybrid, you know, just because so everyone I know comes to the meeting. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And your meetings are open to the public, just to clarify. Yes, our meeting is open to the public. Yep. Okay. Any further updates? Uh, seeing none, our, our next meeting is scheduled for August 23rd. Again, please let Vince know if you are not able to attend so that we can have a heads up if we're not going to have quorum. Uh, and if you are on vacation, enjoy. <laughs> and uh, other than that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Peter. Second. Thank you, Gary. Roll call vote. Gary Beller. Aye. Sarah Boyce. Aye. Peter Brace. Aye. Matt Fee. Aye. Rachel Freeman? Aye. Uh, Joe Topham? Aye. And Mary Longy for aye. We'll see you on the 23rd. Take care, everyone.